turning loss into law. But the pain that we have felt, we don't want anybody else to feel. A Montana family aims to protect others from the pain of tragedy will share their story. Plus, a space to be free. We have people that I would consider to be like pretty elite athletes, and we have beginners that maybe just started working out this year. I'll take you to Pura Vita Studios, as one woman has made it her mission to help others put their best foot forward. The MTN 430 News starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday. I'm Andrea Lutz. Montana is currently ranked as the worst state for drunk drivers, leading the country in deadly crashes where blood alcohol levels are staggering. Billings saw the tragedy firsthand this past Friday after a woman died on 27th Street. But as our Haley Monaco reports, one family who knows this consequence all too well is aiming to prevent it from happening to others. Bobby was a, a real light. A mom never imagines losing a child. In March of last year, my little brother Bobby was killed by a drunk driver while crossing the street to actually get into his sober ride after his 21st birthday. It's a reality that Bobby Dubree's family now deals with every day. The driver was more than double the legal limit. A life with so much left to live. They also had to fight for higher penalties for the person behind the wheel. The driver was sentenced to a year and a half in jail. But the pain that we have felt, we don't want anybody else to feel. Beth McBride and Carly Dubree, Bobby's mom and sister, turned their loss into a legacy. Starting Montana Bar Ferries, leaving cards with powerful messages and a $5 coffee gift card on vehicles left at bars overnight. Just looking for a way to thank people for making a more responsible decision and not putting another family through what we've been through. They're also hoping to bring a new law to the House in January, one that states that anyone driving under the influence with a blood alcohol content higher than 0.15 and kills someone should be considered inherently negligent. It is automatically a felony and has felony consequences. So I applaud uh, what they're doing uh, with this law and I have a lot of hope that it will get passed. Billings Representative Mike Yakowich introduced a bill last session attempting to revise when a BAC sample is collected. His goal, within two hours after a serious wreck. These kind of bills are only holding us more accountable so that we can be more aware of the, the tragedy when someone uses alcohol and abuses it. It's a fight that can't stop. All of these deaths are preventable. Until families like Bobby's no longer have to go through the pain of losing someone because of drunk driving. Bobby would still be here if that man was paying attention. Mm -hmm. If he wasn't drunk, he would have stopped. He would have seen him. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. A 16-year-old boy is dead and two others injured after a crash in Bighorn County. The vehicle crash happened 10 days ago on Highway 212 near Lame Deer. 19-year-old male driver failed to negotiate a left curve and rolled off a large embankment. That's according to police. A 16-year-old passenger was declared dead on scene while the extent of the injuries of that 19-year-old and then another 15-year-old girl unknown. Police also tell MTN News alcohol is a factor in that crash. None of the occupants were wearing seatbelts. The United States Postal Service says it'll agree to pause the restructuring plans of Wyoming's mail service. That decision coming after Wyoming's congressional delegation fought against it, which would have closed all major mail processing facilities. Well, under the plan, all outbound mail from northern and central Wyoming, which is currently sorted in Casper, would go to Billings. The change would slow delivery, and the Postal Service says it was not to save money. Instead, it's part of a 10-year, $40 billion strategy to improve overall operations. Operations. Finding space is sometimes all it takes to feel like you're where you belong. Pura Vita Studios in Billings is exactly where dozens are finding space to exercise, dance, and learn some new skills. As I found out, that's exactly the idea behind owner Sarah Kennedy's mission to match people with their passion. On any given day, people love it. This place is rocking. You can feel the beat and it just 
gets you into it. Right here is Zumba, but classes held here at Pura Vida Studio off 16th and Grand are set to take it up a notch, pushing these bodies to the max. We have people that I would consider to be like pretty elite athletes, and we have beginners that maybe just started working out this year. And the fun doesn't stop here. But there's people that love the partner dancing. There's people that love the line dancing. So just a place to collaborate and be a community. As owner Sarah Kennedy explains, her entrepreneur studio holds no boundaries. So what it's meant to be for is for your creative vision. With a background in dance and fitness, she opened Pura Vida in 2022, but says it's grown to a space she could have never imagined. For more, we have boot camp, we have yoga, we have Grit Active, which is Spartan training. We have Zumba, we have dance, we have choreography classes. So it's just very vast. Now her space is creating a space for others to share what they know with Billings. Jennifer Klein says the specs of the space help her cater her fitness class. You're not stuck doing what a gym wants you to do in your class. Better energy, better turnout, better everything. And it's customizable. We have inside the studio, we use the parking lot. Now Gino Savini can bring country dancing to Billings one night a week, same time, same place. This doesn't exist here. Like there's not classes or there's not places that are focused around country dancing. And Kennedy makes the space affordable, which she says helps other businesses thrive too. You know, my, my phrase here is imagine, teach, collaborate, because it really can be anything you want it to be. And owner Sarah Kennedy rents that space on an hourly basis. She's encouraging groups who need a space to learn dance or exercise, of course, to reach out. You can learn more about Pura Vida on our website, ktvq.com. Here's a look at the Stockton Bag Weather Cam live here this afternoon. You can kind of see the rain base here as the rain starting to move into the Billings area. Temperatures have been mild, dropped down to 61 degrees right now. Those showers and thunderstorms starting to show up on Doppler radar, so you can see it's starting to move in pretty much all across the region. Let's take a look here as we switch over to our uh, Doppler radar. You can see this line of showers, thunderstorms moving in towards Billings, more storms off into the eastern plains. Now, some of this has the potential for 40 mile per hour wind gusts. We could see some pea sized hail out of some of these storms as well. So here's Billings. There's the storm system starting to move in around Joliet, Laurel, starting to move this direction. We'll take a closer look at that and the rest of the forecast coming up. Testimony resumes from Michael Cohen, former President Donald Trump's fixer during the hush money trial that's going on. This while a New York appeals court upheld a gag order on Trump. Michael George has the latest from New York. Former President Donald Trump entered court Tuesday with some high profile Republican allies, including House Speaker Mike Johnson. I am disgusted by what is happening here. Johnson later spoke outside the courthouse where he attacked the credibility of the prosecution's star witness, Trump's former lawyer and fixer, Michael Cohen. This is a man who is clearly on a mission for personal revenge and who is widely known as a witness who has trouble with the truth. Trump's defense team also tried to undermine Cohen, a convicted felon during cross-examination. Earlier, Cohen testified that payments he received from Trump were reimbursements for the $130,000 he paid adult film star Stormy Daniels to keep quiet ahead of the 2016 election and not for his legal services. The presumptive GOP presidential nominee insists he did nothing wrong. So I had a legal expense and I marked it down as a legal expense. Trump is facing 34 counts of falsifying business records. Prosecutors say he engaged in election fraud by classifying the reimbursements as legal fees. You have the 34 documents, but what you have to get is the nexus between falsifying those records, misdemeanors, into a, an election violation. In a setback for Trump, an appeals court upheld Judge Juan Mershon's gag order, preventing Trump from talking about witnesses and jurors in the case. Trump has been held in contempt for violating the gag order 10 times and has been threatened with jail for future violations. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Tonight, we're meeting another candidate hoping to represent Montana's Eastern District in the U.S. House. As MTN's Jonathan Anberian reports, Democrat John Driscoll is no stranger to Montana politics. 
It's been 30 years since John Driscoll served in the Montana State Legislature and the Public Service Commission, but he's run for office a number of times since then. And this year, he says he again felt a responsibility to get involved as a Democratic candidate for U.S. House in the Eastern District. People are asking me why I'm doing this. Well, I'm doing it because I'm trying to protect the uh, constitutional democracy that I've enjoyed my whole life. I spoke to Driscoll outside the Montana State Capitol in front of the statue of Thomas Francis Marr. Driscoll said he's inspired by Marr and other Irish immigrants who understood the value of freedom in this country. It's one thing to swear an oath to protect and defend the Constitution, but there comes a time when it really is threatened. And I believe it's threatened now by the whole Trump phenomena. Driscoll served three terms in the legislature in the 70s, including one as Speaker of the House. He then spent 12 years on the PSC, ending in 1993. There will be one clear difference between Driscoll and the other candidates in this race. He's refusing to raise money for campaigning. People think I'm crazy, but I'm not. I think it's a fundamental problem with Congress. He's made multiple runs for Congress, pledging not to raise or spend campaign funds. And he won a Democratic U.S. House primary in 2008. People are giving their power to money. Both the people that are running for office, instead of just trusting their own ability to speak and, and give their ideas, and then uh, people that are voters. And as long as you give power to money, you don't have any power. Driscoll says he would support legislation to protect abortion rights at the federal level. He says he's not afraid to make the case for positions that might be unpopular, expressing opposition to the Sentinel project to upgrade nuclear missiles in Montana, and saying nuclear energy will be a part of the state's future and leaders should look at creating an underground waste repository. He says he'd support any of the Democratic candidates, but believes he's to their left. Still, he thinks he can make the case to voters across the political spectrum. And once I'm through the primary and people are presented with this character, uh, with whoever of the nine Republicans across from me, uh, then they'll start looking at me more closely. And, uh, and then I'll tell them what I think. And I think what I think, unless the person across from me is identical to me, is what needs to be done. Remember, you can find our interviews with all of the Eastern District candidates on our website. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Tomorrow we'll learn more about Democrat candidate Kevin Ham. And again, you can watch the profiles of all 12 candidates under the MTN political tab at KTVQ.com. Still to come on the MTN 430 News here on Q2. A senior Bronx who uses a superstitious habit to fuel his sports success is now vying for Athlete of the Year. We'll meet him in just a bit, but first, rain and storms continue to hit the area. Ed has the very latest in his full seven-day forecast right after this.